In this Grasshopper tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to create fractals such as this one in Grasshopper for Rhino. All right, let's get started. So first I'm going to disable this algorithm because I would like to start from scratch. All right, so if I construct a point, now we can see that point has appeared in the origin because it's got its default inputs, but I'm gonna move it 100 units in the X direction so that we can scale it based on the origin as the center point. I'm just gonna leave that default center point. And as you can see, it appeared twice as close to the origin because the scale factor is 0.5. All right, so if I just copy and paste the scale operation right here, now this is the naive approach and it works, but I have a better way. As you can see, these points are scaling in towards the center and they are correct construction points for if I were to try and turn it into a fractal. However, I have a much better method. Let's just take one of these scale operations and give it a bunch of factors. So if I give it a range of factors, which by default is from zero to one, um, it's not gonna like that because it does not want a factor of zero. That's impossible. Um, luckily, that's not what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be taking the power of, actually two raised to all of the values in this range. And let's actually give this a nice integer plugin 12 for the domain and 12 for the steps. That means we're gonna get 13 numbers that range from zero to 12. And we are gonna raise two to all of those powers. And if we plug those in for the factors, now you can see we have the same result only using one scale node. And these are our construction points for creating the fractal. All right, so the next thing we're gonna have to do is set up this scale factor right here. I'm gonna set it between zero, actually, excuse me, 1.00 and two. And by adjusting this number, I can change the scale per iteration in this recursive fractal. So let's just add some labels, scale per iteration. You know, labeling is a good thing to do to communicate to yourself later and make your job easier in the future. So the next thing we're gonna to want to do is rotate all of these points, but we're gonna rotate them each a different amount. So if I just copy and paste this range right here and pull it over, we know it's got the right number of values, so we can plug it straight into the angle, and it looks like we're rotating a little too much. So let's change the domain. We'll just set it ourselves using 6.65 and now you can see that I can adjust how much rotation there is per iteration. So this is rotation per iteration. All right, now we'll drag this to the front just to consolidate our inputs. And this is going to be our number of iterations. Great, okay. so. Now what we can do is use these construction points to start creating our fractal. So if we link them up with a polyline, then we have this result. Oh, excuse me. We have this result. We can preview everything else off because this is all we're gonna be using to work with. This line actually follows uh, a Fibonacci sequence which is really interesting and it, it scales down using the golden ratio. Let's just um, increase the number of iterations here and maybe increase the rotation per iteration. And now you can see how this curve really is a fractal. So if we um, then go in here and explode this, polyline, we can turn one line into 70 segments. But first we're gonna to want to array polar, 
in order to turn this into all of the construction lines we want. And then we will explode all of our construction lines so that we can loft together these individual segments to create each individual surface. So to do this, let's first analyze the structure of our data. Um, so if I choose the first item from every list using the list item node, which by default selects index zero from every list, you can see that I'm not seeing any of those values. They must be the very inside values. And that's not correct. That's not the structure I'm looking for. So if I flip this matrix, now the first value is going to run in the opposite direction. And as you can see, these are all the first values that run of lists that run in directions around this circle. And that is the correct direction for these lists because we want to loft these curves around this circle. So now that our data is squared away, let us, let's shift each list. So we'll have a regular version and a shifted version. And if we plug in our line container, the one with the black hexagon logo to here, what we can do is graft and simplify both of these outputs so that they're ready to be matched up into one line container. And as you can see, the result of this operation is two items per group, which is perfect because if you loft using two items per group, everything is going to connect just how we wanted it to. All right, so if I want to add color, I'm gonna to have to use a custom preview. And as you can see, I'm adding color to a bunch of lists, but I can get rid of that data structure because it's not important anymore. Now I'm adding color to 700 items in one list. So to make sure we have the same number of colors as geometries, we're gonna use our list length node and to actually apply the color, we're going to use our color HSL node. So here what we can do is use a range and make sure that the number of steps in this range is one less than the length of the list. So I'm gonna subtract one here. And the reason that I want the number of steps to be one less is because there's always one more value created than number of steps. So in order to create these 700 values, I had to subtract one from the length of the list. All right, so if I plug in this range to the hues, you can see we're getting this cool color scheme that runs all the way through every color, but we can do better by multiplying all of these numbers by a constant, say 12. And now you can see we can adjust these colors and create all sorts of cool interference patterns within our design. All right, let's check that out, very cool. So to create an animation of this using the number slider where you right click and select animate, there's actually a weird trick that must be employed. Let me preview everything else off. Um, so to scale in on this, you may think that I can just drop a scale node and a factor, say 12, my favorite number, and preview everything else off. Now this looks right, but watch as I zoom in, I start to zoom slower and slower and slower. And that's because I need to scale in exponentially. I cannot scale in linearly. So for our factor, just as we did before, we're gonna want to um, copy and paste this power operation right here and drag it over. But instead of raising a to the power of all of these values, we're gonna just raise A to one simple power. And in that way, we can scale in and make sure that we are scaling in at the same speed at every point in time. So now all I have to do is right click on this number slider and select animate. And 
now what I can do is I can create one frame per uh, value that I feed in here and then I can stitch those frames together into a video. So all I have to do is specify a folder that I would like to save them to. Um, that's already set up and I can specify a frame count and that is that decides how many times you divide up the range of this number slider into specific frames. You can specify resolution, you can include a tag at the bottom that tells you about the value you are inputting and the exact frame that you are on and all of this nice information. So if I press OK here, you can see it's going to run through frame by frame and um, save them to whichever folder I specified. Then I can use any number of other softwares to turn the frames into a video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.